John Adams' Letters from the Front podcast, December 1914. This podcast looks at life in World War I through the letters of John Adams, who was 23 when he joined in September 1914. He served with the 9th Service Battalion Royal Irish Fusiliers and was involved in many significant events in the Western Front, particularly Passchendaele. These are his words, read by his grandchildren and narrated by his great-grandchildren. In December 1914, it's generally remembered for the time that the Germans and the British troops met in no man's land and they played football and they sang uh, Christmas carols. But for John Adams, he was still in training with many of his other people. And we'll hear through the history segment in this podcast what his daily routine was. But we also have a note about what he was doing on Christmas Day and a letter from one of his cousins, uh, both read by John and Roger, my brothers, John Adams' grandchildren. At the very end of the podcast, we're paying our uh, little tribute to those men. John Adams was many things, and in 1947, in Hamilton's Bond, in the middle of County Armagh, he helped set up Ham Hamilton's Bond Silver Band, which is still running today. My father was very heavily involved, and through him, both John, Roger, and myself became heavily involved. We played different instruments, and we've come together on the internet to uh, play Silent Night. We did this in three different parts of the United Kingdom, sent in the wee sound bite and connected them all together. So it may be a wee bit rough, but this is our tribute not only to John Adams, our grandfather, who helped set up the band, but also to our father, John Adams again, who encouraged us in our music. And we still all played various instruments. So please listen at the end. My name's Mark Adams and John Adams was my grandfather. From October 1914, the men were issued with their new cap badges and the 9th Royal Irish Fusiliers badge comprised of a silver-coloured Princess Victoria's coronet over a separate brass fired grenade with a silver Irish harp superimposed on the body. On October 28, 1914, the new formation was called the 36th Ulster Division with the brigades being numbered as the 107th 108th and 109th, of which John Adams was in the 108th Brigade. Training at Clandyboy consisted mainly of drill, physical training and rifle handling. The day's work began at Revier at 6am and in the next half hour the men readied themselves and had a breakfast of coffee and biscuits. A parade followed from 7 to 8am and then a more substantial meal of bread and tinned meat or jam. Drill followed until noon, then lunch, and an afternoon of training until 4.30pm. The evenings were relatively free, except for those detailed with pickets. Tattoo was sounded at 9pm, with lights out an hour later. The conditions in camp turned bad with the onset of bad weather at the end of October 1914, and an outbreak of meningitis came in November. A and C Company were moved to Victoria Barracks in Belfast. The weather was particularly severe that year and left those in camps suffering a miserable time. But morale remained high with Christmas leave granted from the 19th of December to the 3rd of January. From personal notes by John Adams, Friday the 25th of December 1914. Spent Christmas Day loading hay for horses in France at Belfast Docks. A letter from T. Davidson on YMCA paper to Mrs. J. Adams, Lissa Dion. 7388 Lance Corporal T. Davidson, Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers, Caserne Tropel, Rouen, France. 31st of December 1914. Dear Aunt, just a few lines in answer to your kind and welcome letter, which I received all right, and was pleased to see, Bob, that you are all enjoying good health. As for myself, I'm still enjoying the usual health, and you know it's always been good. Thank God for it. I'm also pleased to hear John getting home for a few days, although it might be a while before he comes out here. And perhaps he may not have to come at all, but if he does, I might see him somewhere. 
He might let me know what regiment he belongs to and the date he expects to come out on. I suppose he's the only one from about there that he knows coming out. I'm sorry to hear of Willie McKnight, but as you say, I must have been in the hospital for I was talking to him the day before I got wounded, and he was in good spirits and healthy. We were talking about you and all the people I knew around that way. I was asking him if he knew John and James. I'll try and find out all about him, although it'll be difficult as those who were beside him might be away themselves. If you see them, you might give them my heartfelt sympathy, hoping they will soon get over their sad bereavement. And, as you say, it was a dull Christmas. We will live with God's help to enjoy a better one next year. I have not much more to say at present. Hoping this finds you all in good health. I'll close by bidding you all a goodbye to hear from you. Wishing you all a prosperous new year, 1915. From your ever-loving nephew, T. Davidson. Thank you for listening to John Adams' Letters from the Front podcast. To find out more about John Adams and his family, visit www.johnadams.org.uk forward slash letters. And you can email us with your comments or questions at letters at johnadams.org.uk. You can also follow at J Adams Letters on Twitter. The history of the 9th Service Battalion at Royal Irish Fusiliers during World War I is taken from Blackers Boys. Visit them at www.9thirishfuseliers.co.uk That's with the number 9, not the letter. The podcast will be published 100 years after the letters were written, so will be published nearly every month. This has been a Mark's Mass production. <laughs>